Model engineering for beginners, part 27. Completing the tailstock die holder. The next part of the operation is to mark the positions and drill three holes around the perimeter of the die holder's main body. For this, I'm using my calibrated eye. A more technical method would be better. But in reality, doing this sort of thing as a beginner is a starting process of calibrating your eye. So you don't have to use measuring equipment for everything. This short series started off just being about plain turning, but I thought I may as well make something useful. Having marked out the positions for the three holes around the perimeter, first of all, as always, I used a center drill, followed by a twist drill, and here I'm threading the holes 2BA. To be more exact, I'm threading one of the holes, because the center drilling, drilling, and then threading of the holes needs to be done in one operation without moving the position of the work in the machine vise. After a while, this is what it looks like. I could have used Allen bolts or hexagon bolts for all three positions, but for the moment I've done it this way. In this clip I've mounted the die holder in the three jaw chuck using the external parts of the jaws. I've done it this way so the part I'm about to machine is closer to the chuck, therefore more rigid, less likely to move around and I've changed the position of the cutting tool in the tool holder. The reason for this is, using it this way, the tip cuts and the rest of the tool polishes as it goes down the work. You get a better finish. I learnt this tip many years ago from a professional lathe operator. I'll probably get some comments from the armchair machinists, but it seems to work. The finish is a little bit better. If I wanted to be really picky, I could remachine the rear face of the front part of the die holder and then I could plug the end, put the life centre back in and true up the main shaft of it, but it's unimportant. The main parts of this die holder are very accurate. The hole down the centre and the part that holds the die are both fully concentric with each other. And the reason for that, as I showed in the previous episode and I think I mentioned, was the hole down the centre and the part that holds the die were machined without removing the part from the chuck. Often changing the direction of the traverser so that the lathe saddle, complete with the lathe tool, move in the opposite direction is a good idea. Don't adjust the tool, just pass it back over the work, and sometimes you will see that the finish gets even better. This technique is especially useful for boring. Once you've bored the hole, reverse the direction of the traverser, the tool comes back in the opposite direction, do not adjust the tool, and you will get a better finish. But sometimes you'll hear chattering, and if you hear any chattering, like a screaming noise. Sometimes removing a very small amount of metal will set up a resonance in the work and this resonant vibration is called chattering. It leaves patterns in the work that you really do not want. To finish off I'm using some emery cloth to clean up the outer surface followed by some wet dry sandpaper to get a finer finish. And here's the part almost complete. I still need to add the handle and I'm not going to show the making and fitting of the handle in this video. You'll see the handle soon enough when I use the tailstock die holder complete with the die to cut a 16mm by 1.5 thread. Because this is a tutorial about plain turning, next I'm going to make the shaft that will go down the middle of the tailstock die holder. This is a piece of silver steel. Silver steel is interesting stuff. In its natural state, it's quite hard wearing. But by heating it and cooling it a couple of times, which is called hardening and tempering the metal, the entire piece will become very hard indeed. I don't need to harden this piece of silver steel for this job, I'm going to leave it in its natural state. After turning it to the size that I need between centres, or what I should say with one end in the chuck and the other end being supported by a live centre in the tailstock. Once this centre support spindle is finished, it will fit into the tailstock chuck. That's why I'm turning part of it down to a size that will fit in the tailstock chuck. I'm removing quite a lot of metal at quite a high speed and this stuff's hard. Look how the turnings are coming off. One continuous length and look at the colour of them, they're very hot indeed. So don't forget when you're doing this job, there are a couple of do's and don'ts that you really need to listen to. Do not let the swarf build up too much around the tool because as it gets nearer to the chuck, if the chuck grabs it, then it will throw it around the workshop. And if you're stood in the way, you'll be hit by it first. These pieces of metal are very hot and very sharp. 
it's a good policy to periodically stop the lathe and remove all the swarf. Do not use your fingers. Apart from it being very hot, all of it is like a razor blade, extremely sharp. I knocked the swarf out of the way with a piece of bar, as you can see here. And the final word of warning is that this entire piece of metal that I've just turned is very hot indeed, so you don't want to touch that either. I'm going to fit the tailstock chuck on the end, and here you see the principle. I just need to shorten it a bit to make it look better. I turn this piece of metal very slightly oversized. The tailstock die holder will fit on it, but it's a bit tight. The final operation is to use a piece of emery cloth first, and it's best to use the emery cloth with some oil. If you do that, it will cut better. All I needed to do in this case was to run the emery cloth up and down this piece of metal a dozen or so times, and then, still with oil on the piece, I used some wet or dry sandpaper, and this gets a particularly good finish. And because both the emery cloth and the wet or dry sandpaper are actually removing metal, the entire shaft does get a little bit smaller. Here you see the principle on the bench. The end of the bar that I've reduced in diameter fits in the tailstock chuck. Then the tailstock die holder is free to slide back and forth on this piece of metal. It needs to be sort of a piston fit on the bar. It doesn't need to be tight. In fact, it's definitely counterproductive if the bar is too tight a fit. As at any threads that you're cutting, move the die holder back and forth like this. When you use it in the lathe it won't do this, I've got my hand over the end to make the end of the die holder airtight, hence the popping noise. And that's it. I've got to make and drill and thread the operating arm, fit it to the die holder and then it's done. Thanks for watching this short series and I hope you found it useful.